Welcome to Introduction to 3D Modeling using Fusion 360. Workshop Details Introduction to 3D Modeling using Fusion 360. In this workshop, we will learn reasons to 3D model. We will learn how to install the software, which is Fusion 360. We will learn an introduction to the interface, which is where I show you all the various interfaces and parts that make up Fusion 360. And we will create our first model, which is a coffee mug. Course Description and Goals Goals of this course are to become familiar with Fusion 360 and have basic knowledge of its functions. After this webinar, students should be able to make their own 3D objects that can be exported and 3D printed. Prerequisites To complete this course, you will first need a Windows computer with version 8.1 or Word version 10. You will need a basic familiarity with computer operation. And you'll need Fusion 360, which we will show you how to get later in this course. This course is approximately one pre-recorded session long. About me. My name is Corey Chung and I attend James Logan High School. My hobbies include 3D modeling, playing varsity badminton on the James Logan badminton team, and occasionally playing video games with my friends. About Design Your Careers, or DYC. DYC is a 501c3 nonprofit organization that strives to showcase everyone's talents or skills by running various free workshops. Below, there are some links that can give you more information about DYC and where it came from. How to become a student leader. If you're one who is keen to be a student leader or possess leadership skills, come and take the plunge right away. Join the DYC team as student leader by becoming a member. Students can sign up to lead in various ways based on their interests, availability, and skills. Sign up and mention any skill in any form that can be shared online or offline or in school. The DYC team will guide you with the tools and the structure. This is an easy way to earn volunteer hours, and qualified candidates have the chance to earn special recognition. You may also qualify for PVSA awards if the effort fulfills PVSA qualification requirements. Student Leader Benefits We ensure you that the activities at DYC will be practical, fun, and informative. Mention your skills in detail so we can fit you in the right program. Submit your details through the membership form. Sign up today and discover countless ways to participate from anywhere. Don't miss this great opportunity. Student Leader Benefits Leadership Role and re Special Recognition Community Hours Participate from Anywhere and matches your interests. Join the network of ambitious youth leaders from DYC wanting to grow innovation, leadership, and sharing skills. Get involved and discover countless ways to participate from anywhere at a pace that fits your schedule. Set up free consultation with one of our core team members for additional guidance. Join any of our programs that reflect your interests and earn community hours and special recognition for your participation. Now that we're done with the DYC intro, we can start with the introduction to 3D modeling. First off, we need to figure out why. What's the point of 3D modeling anyways? There are a few reasons you'd want a 3D model. For one, it helps designers easier visualize their ideas before they can create it physically. Specifically for 3D printing, which is what we're gonna be focusing on today, it's useful for designing and printing useful 3D objects. It can also be used to create products or bring things to life, similar to the above two points. And finally, it can turn 2D objects into 3D objects using 3D modeling softwares, such as the one we're going to be using right now, which is Fusion 360. There are many applications of 3D modeling in the real world, and here are a few of them. One, it helps designers plan out architecture so that they can send to engineers. Two, it can be used to create hearts and other products, such as food, through the use of biofilaments in 3D printers. Three, it can be used to create and stress test buildings through the use of load analysis, which is used in Fusion 360, but we will not be focusing on that today. We're only going to be focusing on 3D modeling itself. And the last point, which is what we're doing today, it can be used to create 3D objects. Now that we've gone over why we want to use Fusion 360, we need to figure out how to install it and how to use it. So first off, we're going to figure out why we need to use this one rather than any other program that also uses 3D modeling, such as AutoCAD or SolidWorks. Fusion 360 is one of the best 3D modeling softwares for many reasons. One, it's balanced between user-friendly and powerful capability. This means that while advanced users can take advantage of its powerful capability, it's also user-friendly enough for pretty much anyone to just pick up and start using immediately. Second off, it's free for education slash personal uses, which either of those you should be using this for today. We're not gonna be using this for commercial use, we're only going to be using this for education or personal purposes. And third, it contains tools for planning, testing, and executing a 3D design. In this course, we're only focusing on planning, which is drafting and designing a 3D object. 
Installing Fusion 360. So before we can get started with 3D modeling, we first need to create an Autodesk account and install Fusion 360. Fusion 360 does require an Autodesk account, and for that you'll need your own personal email to put in in order to make the account. So first of all, you visit the link shown, and you need to scroll down and click on Get Started. So I actually have the link right here, and you will get to this page first. So all you need to do is scroll down and get to this part, which is Activate Fusion 360 for personal use. So all you need to do is click Get Started, and once you do that, it'll prompt you for an email. I already have mine because I already signed in before. So you need to click Create Account, and you need to put in your first name, last name, and all the other information you need, and then you need to create the account. Once you're finished doing that, you should have a prompt to download it, the Fusion 360 client. Once you do that, you just need to click on the downloader, which should be labeled Fusion 360 client downloader.exe and allow it to set up. Once the setup finishes, all you need to do is click sign in and you can input the information that you created earlier and it should allow you to continue. And once you're complete, you can just click continue and then you should be able to access Fusion 360 properly. Now we're going to introduce you to the interface. Now that you've completed the installation, you should have a screen like this. I actually have Fusion 360 open right here, and here is the interface. There are nine parts to this interface, shown right here. Number one is called the application bar, which is this top row over here. This allows you to do things such as save, create a new project, and undo and redo. There's also the project files, which are shown on the left. If you click on this top left of the application bar, you will access all your previous projects and you can easily manage them, delete them, and copy paste them, anything you need to do. And for number three, there's profile and help, which you can create your profile right here and you can access help right here. For the toolbar, this is pretty much one of the most important things. This has many different little sections which allow you to create, modify, and extrude different parts of your object and this created actually this coffee mug which is what we're going to be learning today there's also the browser in the top left this browser it contains all the different areas of the project as you can see here it shows named views which is top if you click on front it shows it from the front if you click on right it shows from the right and if you click on home it shows a basic view there's also origin, bodies, and there's sketches. These sketches and bodies I will explain later in the course. And there's also the view cube, which is shown in this top right right here. Using this view cube, you can do things such as drag around the object and pivot it around so that you can view it better. You can also click on the cube so that you can access different like straight on areas. Like you can have a side view, you can have a top view, and you can have a bottom view if you click on it. You also have the option to rotate in this top right here, which will rotate the object. There's also the canvas, and the, also known as the work plane. This is the main area, pretty much. This is where you're going to be doing all your work and your sketches. This allows you to move around, edit your model, and do pretty much everything you need to do to model your object. There's also camera controls in the bottom. We're not going to be using these that much because I'll show you some shortcuts that allow you to navigate this interface a lot easier. And then finally, there's the timeline. This is basically the undo redo section shows every single change that you made. So you can go reverse all the way back You can go back in time and figure out what you've done. You don't really need to know all of these just yet. The most important ones are really the toolbar, the canvas work plane, and the camera controls, which is this top bar over here where you can create and modify your object and the main area, which you use your camera on. Now we need to figure out camera controls, which is the main way that we're going to be navigating around our object in Fusion 360. First off, we have the pan tool. This will move the view of the work plane horizontally or vertically by dragging the mouse while you're holding middle mouse. Orbit. Move your camera around the model. This is done by holding shift plus middle mouse and then dragging. In this mode, your object is stationary and you're sort of orbiting your camera around the model. And finally, we have zoom, which just zooms in and out of the model. It's pretty self-explanatory and it's done by using the scroll wheel. 
So I'm going to go on Fusion 360 and show you this right now. So we have this object here, which we're going to be designing. And as you can see, I just used the Orbit tool. And the Pan tool is pretty simple. You just hold Middle Mouse, and then you'll be able to move your object up and down everywhere around so that you can look at it better. We'll also have the Orbit tool, which is done by using Shift and Middle Mouse. And this allows you to orbit around the parts of the object. And you can just get a really good 360 degree view of it. And finally, we have the Zoom tool, which is just zooming in and out. And you really need to get familiar with these camera controls because these are going to be crucial for our next step, which is actually designing the model. These are the three main controls you'll be using to navigate around your object so that we can design it. Of course, there's also the view cube, but that one's more for like very precise movements where you don't need to just have a rough image just around. The view cube is more if you want like a specific plane. So if you want to access the front plane only, you get a perfect side view that's perfectly straight on. Or if you want a perfect top view, we're going to be using the view cube a lot too. But the pan and the orbit and the zoom are also very good for what we're about to do. Okay, now that we're familiar with those, hopefully you should be familiar with those, we'll be getting on to creating our first model, which is the coffee mug that I've shown earlier. So our first model. We're going to be making the coffee mug, as I mentioned. And there are three basic steps that will teach you the essential parts of Fusion 360. There are mainly three steps, which is the 2D sketch, the extrusion, and creating the handle. And I'll explain this as we go along. Starting a new project file. So in the top right corner, you need to click this button, which is right here, and then click on New Design. This will allow you to create the new design and create a new project so that you can rename it and start fresh. I'm going to show you how to do this right in Fusion 360. So if I go over here, I'm going to click on the top left, click on File, and I'm going to click on New Design. This creates a completely blank, empty area. So there's no model here, as you can see. And now we can start creating and sketching. So first, we're going to learn how to do the sketch. Um, imagine you're making a coffee cup from the ground up. So the base of the cup is where we're going to start. So we're going to start with a circle at the bottom. So we're going to start with the top right, where we click Create Sketch. And once we create the sketch, we have to pick a plane where we can start the sketch. And we will select the bottom one. And then we need to click the cube in the top right to move the camera view. So I'm going to show you this in Fusion 360. All right, now that we're back in Fusion 360, I will show you how to do this. You simply click Create a Sketch. Sketching is basically like the most basic function of Fusion 360. It's going to be the basis of most of your projects, because this allows you to create your 2D design before you make your 3D one. So once we have this design, I will click on the bottom plane, which is what we're going to work with. And then on the view cube, which you see in the top right over here, I'm going to click on top. This allows me to get a top view of the plane so that I can sketch the circle and then extrude, which I'll explain later. All right, now that we've created that 2D sketch, you should have something that looks a little like this, which I've shown already right here. Now we can begin the sketch. So imagine the view of the cup, as I mentioned before, as you're looking from the top down. So we can design the cup by creating a top-down view. So you essentially have to make the circle as is shown in this coffee cup right here. So after measuring my own coffee cup, I found out that a coffee cup is around 80 millimeters in diameter. And generally in 3D modeling, designing an SI units like millimeters and centimeters is going to make things a lot more simple than, say, using inches or feet. So in order to make a circle, it's pretty simple. You go to the center diameter circle, which is shown on the top left right here. As you can see right here, in this project file, you have the center diameter circle. So I'm just going to click that, and then we can begin creating the circle. So all you need to do is click once on the center dot of the work plane and move your mouse outward. Now, once you click on the center dot, your circle is going to be locked to that dot, and you can drag outwards to a specific diameter. But we're not going to drag it to the diameter, we're simply just going to type it in, because Fusion 360 allows you to type it in for much more precise measurements. So while you're dragging out, type in 80 on your keyboard and press enter. And you should now have a blue 80 millimeter circle on your workplace. So I'm going to show you how to do this right now. Okay, now that we're back in Fusion 360, I'm going to simply click on the center dot with the center diameter circle, and I'm going to drag out. I'm not holding onto the mouse anymore, and you can see I can just easily move around the circle however much I want. And I can also pan around. So you can see the millimeters are changing and the measurements are changing based on how far I drag. And you can see that the line here designates that the circle is being measured by the diameter right now. So we mentioned before that the coffee cup was 80 millimeters in diameter. So I'm just going to type in 80 and press enter. Now that I press enter, you'll see that the sketch created a blue circle. Now you might be wondering what the blue means. What the blue means is that it creates a closed sketch. So let me demonstrate what that means here. 
see if I have a line and I create three lines like this that means you can see there's no blue in there that means it's not closed but as soon as I close this object and make it into a square by connecting these two lines it'll turn blue when it's blue it's closed and that means you can extrude it later in the course I'm gonna delete the square now and that means I have to delete every single line and then we can go back to the slides Now that we made the base of the cup, we have to design the walls, and they'll be extruded later, as I'll explain later. So, for our coffee cup, we're just going to make the walls about 4 millimeters wide, and we'll use the offset tool, which is in the modify section of the sketch. Basically, what the offset tool does is it allows you to select a curve, like a circle or a square, and it creates a new sketch that is either larger or smaller relative to the original object that you selected. So first you have to click on the offset tool and select the circumference of the circle, which will be highlighted blue, such as shown right here. And then once we do that, it'll create a smaller circle that's 3 millimeters smaller in radius than the original circle. The reason we're putting a negative is that it will shrink the circle rather than enlarge it. If we were going to put in a positive value, the new circle would be 3 millimeters larger instead. So now that I'm back in Fusion 360, I'm going to show you how the offset tool works. Basically, you need to click on this offset tool, which is shown in this top bar. And what you need to do is select the circumference, as I mentioned before. And you see this blue slider here. You can drag it inwards and outwards based on how big you want the value to be. So if you want it bigger, it'll be a positive value. You can see that it's 21 millimeters larger than the original circle. And if you dress it smaller, then it'll be smaller. You can see that it goes into the negatives. So we're going to make our walls 3 millimeters thick, which means that we just need to put a negative 3, and we need to tap Enter. And then once we do that, you'll see right here, there's a value that says 3. That means it's 3 millimeters smaller in radius to the original circle. And you can kind of see the base of the coffee cup now. You'll see that this is the walls on the outside, and this is just going to be the base or like the floor of the coffee cup. Now... We're done with that, so we just need to click Finish Sketch to complete the base of the cup, and your work plan should look like this. So I'm just going to click Finish Sketch here, and it'll look just like that. Now we need to extrude the sketch. Extruding sort of pushes or pulls the sketch a certain distance to create a body. And it can also be used to put holes in objects too. We just need to use negative distance instead. The combination of sketching and extruding is pretty much one of the most important things in Fusion 360. It is the basis of all objects that you create, almost all the objects that you create. So it's really important that you learn these objects thoroughly and how they work. So we're going to try to extrude the walls first. In order to do that, we need to select the outside circle, such as shown in here. And looking at my coffee mug again, it is about 100 meters tall. Sorry, 100 millimeters tall. So instead of typing 100 millimeters, we're going to type in 110 millimeters tall because we want the extra 10 millimeters to be designated for the floor of the cup. And once you do that, you can use camera controls to take a look at the newly created cylinder. So we're back here, and we need to click on the extrude tool, which is to the right of the create sketch tool. We need to click that. And then since we're doing the walls first, we need to select the outside circle. And you'll see it's highlighted blue. And all we need to do is click 110 for 110 and enter. It's pretty simple. And once you do that, you can use those camera controls that I mentioned before, and you can take a look at the object. So you can see it's actually a 3D object right now. You can see that these are the walls of the cup. And if you want to return, just go click back on the top on the view cube. So you'll notice that once I click Extrude, once again, you'll see the sidebar pop up. And this sidebar, there's a lot of specific options that you can configure. There's a lot more detail that you can use. And right now we're focusing on basics, so we don't really need to use any of these. But later in the course, I'll show you how to use a few of these options. Now we need to extrude the floor of the cup, right? So in order to do that, we'll be needing to click on the blue circle again and then extrude it upwards 
but there's a problem. If you go back to Fusion 360 right here, you'll see there is no blue circle. There is no way we're going to extrude something that's not there. So if you see, you try to extrude and go to the circle, it's not there. So what we need to do is we need to focus on the browser. And in Fusion 360, once you extrude an object using a sketch, it hides the original sketch, but it's still visible in the browser. So if we want to find the sketch again, then we're just going to have to simply look at the browser and go to sketch one and click on it. So we just need to go to the browser, which is on the top left, click on sketches and open this triangle right here. And you'll see that sketch one, the eye icon is currently closed. So you just need to click on it and now you can see the blue circle and we'll use this blue circle to extrude. Let me just click on top again to align the view properly. There we go. So we just need to repeat the same process for the floor, but when you make it 10 millimeters tall instead of 110 millimeters like I did for the walls. Once we do that, you can rehide the sketch and by clicking the eye again, and then we can use the camera controls to inspect the cup. Once you finish that, we can move on to designing the handle of the cup. So I just need to simply repeat the same process. So I will click on extrude. There's also a shortcut you can use by pressing E, which is going to be useful later in the course. So I just need to click on the circle and type in 10. You can see the arrow there points to where it's going to extrude. If you point it the other way, it'll extrude 10 millimeters in the opposite direction. So we want to make it a positive direction by going into the wall. So we would just do that and it'll create the base. And if you just press enter, there's a base. And the sketch, we don't really need it anymore. So we're just going to hide it. And now you can see, it sort of looks like a cup. It's a cylinder with walls and it's starting to look more like a coffee cup. Okay. Now we can move on to creating the handle of the cup, which is going to be a little bit more complicated because there are a lot of ways to do this. But I think the simplest way, we'll just need to create a sketch of the handle using a side view and we can extrude it symmetrically and this creates the handle. So I'm going to demonstrate just how to visualize that right here. So you can see this cup right here. And if I click on a side view, you'll see that there should be a handle and sort of like an arc right here. So if we just create a sketch that matches that arc, we can then extrude it and it'll be a 3D object, a 3D handle. And then that'll create the handle that we need for the coffee cup. So in order to create the handle, we're gonna be needing to sketch it first. So first you need to orient your cup in a side view, which I just did earlier, which is click on front, back, left, or right. Pretty much any direction that's not the top. Since it's a circle, it doesn't really matter which side view it is right now and then we need to click create sketch and select the square on the bottom and this will make it so that your sketch will be drawn in the exact half of the cup and i'll show that right here we just need to click create sketch and we just need to click on the bottom and it'll make the sketch plane right there so if i use camera controls and navigate around orbit around you can see that this is drawn in the exact half. You can see that this cuts the cup in half. And then if we draw the sketch along this plane, that is the exact half, and then we can just extrude this handle, then you'll just see it'll be appearing right in the middle, which is perfect to what we need. So I'm just gonna go back to the side view, just to simplify it, and we'll move on. So there's a little problem here. We need to draw the sketch, but it's kind of hard to see the sketch if you can't see where we're drawing. So for this, we'll once again use this right sidebar. And there's a new set of options here, which I'll demonstrate later. And for this one, we're focusing on the object that's called Slice. So if we just click Slice, it'll show a cross-section view of the object so that we can see where we're sketching. And you can kind of see it right here. So let me just go back to Fusion 360 and show you. So you can see right here. It's kind of hard to draw on this if you can't see what you're drawing on. On the inside, you know that there's like a curve or like a little hole here, right? But since the front wall is obstructing it, we need to find a way to clear that front wall. And that's pretty simple. We just need to go to this right sidebar right here and we need to click on slice. 
Once we click on slice, you'll see that there is a cross section view. Now we can see the part of the object that is cut in half. And from here, we can easily draw the arch that we need in order to create the handle. Now we need to sketch the handle. In order to sketch the handle, it's going to be pretty simple. We're going to be using the arc tool and the line tool. So first we need to click on the line tool and we need to zoom in on the bottom right of the cup using the scroll wheel, which is shown right here. And we need to click on the exact corner of the cup, which creates the first part of the line. And then we need to create the second part of the line, which goes to the top of the cup. And we will do that by panning. And as you see, it'll create a hundred millimeter line for the inside wall of the cup. And I'll show that right here. So once again, we just need to click the line tool. And then once we make the line tool, we're going to have to go pan down to here, go to the bottom right of the cup, and we'll need to start our little line in the corner right here. And it should snap to the corner. And once you click that, it'll make the first part. And then you can pan over with middle mouse, pan to the top of the cup, and then we can click on the top corner. And as you can see near the bottom of the screen right here, it says 100 millimeters. And that means it's creating a 100 millimeter line from the top to the bottom of the cup, which makes sense because as you saw earlier, this is 10 millimeters and so the rest has to be 100. And if you wanna cancel your line, finish your line, just press escape and it'll throw you back out of the line drawing tool. So the reason we're creating this line is that we need to create an arc afterwards and this arc needs a basis that we can draw from and I'll explain that a little later. So now we need to start creating the arc and we made this line as I mentioned before so that we can build the actual handle and the arc off of this line. So we're going to be selecting the center point arc tool which is selected under create and arc and this arc is pretty simple to use. First you have to click well, you have to click three times. First off, you click it to designate the center of the arc, and then you the next two clicks designate the endpoints of the arc. We're going to be using these to create the main sketch of the handle. So I'm going to go back to Fusion 360 and show you how this works. Now that we're back here, uh, we're going to go pan over to the arc tool, which is in Create, Arc, and Center Point Arc. I'm just going to show you how it works before we incorporate it into the model. So. I'm going to click a random place, say right here. This is the center of the arc. And then once you click on another area, that's the start of the arc. And then if you want to draw the arc a certain way, we just need to designate how long we want the arc to be. And we can just drag around to figure that out. And then we can click once again to finish. And you can see there's an arc that's created. That's approximately that length with the center, start, and end point. Now we know how that works, so we just need to figure out how to incorporate it into this handle, and the line will be very helpful for that. And I'll show you how to make the handle right here. So first off, we need to find the center of the line that we just made, and that's going to be done by dragging along just where the line was. And Fusion 360 is actually pretty helpful in that if you are at the exact center of a line, it snaps it for you and it shows you where it is. And that's designated by this blue triangle right here. And it also says place center point. And if you click once, it'll set it as the center of the curve. And now that we want to do that, we were going to make the start endpoint, which is going to be above the cup. And we're just going to type in 40, which is 40 millimeters away from the original start of the center. Because we don't want it to be 50, because if it's 50, then the handle is going to start at the very top and end at the very bottom. And that's not really what a cup looks like. So that's not what we're going to do. We're going to type in 40 millimeters to make it a sort of a smaller arc that fits more of a coffee mug aesthetic. So now once you click 40 and you need to align it to the top, and that'll be done by this thin green line right here. Once you click there on the thin green line, then you can just drag it down. Make sure to drag from the right so that it's an arc from the outside and not from the inside. And then you can just click on the line again to finish. I'll show you that right here. So that was a lot. Let me just go through it slowly. Go back to the arc tool. Click on center point arc. And first off, we're going to be needing to place the center point right where it shows. So we're just going to have it right here. 
you'll see that it says place center point because it's the center of this line right here. Once we do that, we click it and we can designate the start endpoint. Like I mentioned earlier, we're going to do 40 millimeters, which locks it to 40, and we can't drag it out anymore. And we want it above the original center dot, so we're just going to drag it to the top until you see this thin green line appear. It sort of snaps to it, so you'll be able to feel it. And you just need to click. Now we need to select the last endpoint, which is done by dragging to the right downwards. And you're not going to want to drag to the right inwards because that's going to create an inside handle, which is not what a coffee mug is supposed to look like. So drag to the right and then click on the line again, and then it'll create the arc. So once you create the arc, that's pretty much, you can see a handle here. If you look at it from the side of you, you can imagine this is sort of a handle for the coffee cup. Now our screen should look like this, which I have showed over here. Now we need to offset the handle and we need to create another inside area for the handle because if we just extrude it as it is, there's no way it's going to be a handle. You can't really grip it anyway. It's just going to be like a flat D-shaped thing, a flat D-shaped object sticking out of the handle. So we need to create an inside curve so that we can just extrude this outer circle to make it a handle and make it grippable. So for this, you should, probably might have guessed, but we're going to use the offset tool again. So we're just going to create another inside curve that is shrunken by 8 millimeters, which is about how wide we want the handle to be. And it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, I'm going to show you how to do it right now. Okay, so now that we're back here, I'm going to click the offset tool again. And then I'm going to click on the blue circumference. And it should turn blue. Once again, we can use the slider, drag it out in. You should know how this works by now. And basically... We just need to make it eight millimeters inwards. So type in negative eight and enter. It slows down for a little bit, but now that we're back, it'll show eight millimeters right here. That is the eight millimeter handle that we're gonna extrude and use to create the handle. And now we just need to finish the sketch just by clicking the finish sketch button up here. Should look like this as I've shown over here. You can see the handle. You can see the basis of a handle forming, but it's only a 2D object, so we need to make it 3D now. And we're going to be doing that right now using the extrude tool. Just like before, we're going to use the extrude tool to sort of make it 3D by pushing or pulling the sketch. And as you notice, the sketch is in a center. It's in the exact center of the cup. So we're going to want to extrude both ways. Because if you extrude just one way, the handle's just going to stick out and be uneven. So we're going to want to extrude both directions, and that's using extrude symmetrically, so that it'll be perfectly in the center of the cup. So I can show you why this is the case in Fusion 360. So once we're here, you can see that the cup is perfectly in the center. The handle is perfectly in the center of the cup. So if we were to try to extrude it right now, with the knowledge that we currently have, let me just try it right now. Let's say 10 millimeters, then click OK, then you'll see it's off center. We don't want that. We want it to be perfectly symmetrical in the center. So in order to do that, we'll be using the symmetrical extrusion tool, which I'll demonstrate further. And in order to do this, we need to use the sidebar, which I mentioned earlier. And the main thing we're going to be focusing on is this direction drop down right here. We need to change this one sided direction to symmetric. And once we do this, any extrusion will be mirrored on the opposite side. So I'm going to show you how to do that right here. And I can show you that the extrude tool, if we use it, we'll see this right sidebar once again. And we already know one side's not going to work. So we have to use both sides, which is symmetric. So once we do this symmetrically, it'll show that, see there's two arrows now, so it shows that it'll extrude it twice on opposite sides. So I'll give a random value, say like 20. You see that it extrudes 20 millimeters on both sides. And that allows it to stay in the center of the cup. So we're gonna do four because it's gonna be an eight by eight square that is a handle and that'll be easier to hold. And we're not gonna press enter just yet because there's one more thing I need to explain. 
So you'll notice that the handle was actually red. Earlier when we were extruding the walls, they weren't red, they were blue. So the reason it's doing this is because Fusion 360, when it indicates that there's an extrusion that interacts with an object that already exists, it'll try to make it a hole instead. So fix this, we need to go back to the sidebar and we need to change the cut area in this operation, which cuts a hole instead of what we need, which is joining. We need to just change this to join. It'll create a whole new body instead. So I'm going to show you how to do this right now. And as you can see, it'll create, without changing this operation just yet, it'll just show this and it's red. And we can see that it goes into the object slightly, so it'll make a hole right here. So I'm just going to demonstrate that here. It just creates two squares in the object, which is not what we want. We want a whole handle. So if I just control Z that, go back to extrude, symmetric, and four millimeters out. We need to click on operation cut. Instead of doing that, which is cutting a hole, we need to click join. So we can see now that it's solid and it's going to make a solid handle. So all we need to do is press OK and boom. This is almost the final product. You can kind of see it looks pretty much just like a coffee mug right now, honestly. There are a few finishing touches that we need to do though, which I'll mention further. So now we need to go through the finishing touches. So as we can see now, it's not a fully complete coffee mug just yet. It looks a little rough around the edges. Um, the edges are way too sharp. You can see this handle right here. No one's going to want to grip that. These corners are way too sharp. And if you grip that, you're probably going to get cut. The same with the top walls. If you put your lips on that, your lips are going to get cut. So what we need to do is we need to round out the edges so that something like that won't happen. And for that, we're going to be using the modify section of the toolbar. And this will round out and cut down some edges. And to round out edges, we will mainly be using the fillet tool, which is designated in the modify section. What this does is it rounds out the selected edge or face of an object, shown kind of like here. Just think of it as a sculptor grinding away the cube to round out his edges, just like right here. So you can see this edge right here, when it's filleted, you can see that it's rounded out and you can see it's the same for all of the other edges. So we're going to be doing that for our coffee mug and it'll make it rounder and easier to hold in the end. Okay, so we're going to start with the handle in order to make it rounder. It'll turn our sharp square handle into a round circular handle that's going to be much more comfortable to hold. So all we need to do is select the four edges of the handle and type in four millimeters. So you might be wondering why four millimeters specifically. Well, we've explained before that this is an eight by eight square right here. So if we were just to round out and cut down each four millimeter square from here and round it out, then that's just gonna create a perfect circle that'll follow across the entire handle and create a perfectly round handle. So I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. So we're back here in Fusion 360 and you'll see the modify section up top. And all you need to do is click on fillet or you can use the shortcut, which is F, which is going to be pretty useful. So all we need to do is select four edges. One, this one right here, two for the right, and the other two, which are the bottom two. And we're going to type in four, and you can see there's a preview right here. You can see there's a perfect circle. See, so if we were to type in one, it's going to create more of a rounded rectangle. Two, a little more round. Three. Even more around in four is just the perfect circle, which is exactly what we want. So we just need to click enter, which is pretty simple. And boom, it's a round handle. So now that we see it's a perfectly smooth circular handle, you can just go ahead and admire that for a little bit. And we need to take a look at how the handle transitions into the cup. It's not really smooth. What we kind of want is something like this, where if you ever look at a real coffee mug, you'll see that the handle sort of transitions into the cup, which makes it stronger and makes it stronger to handle and it won't break as easily. So if we want to do this, we can use the fillet tool once again for the points where the handle meets the cup. So we need to select these circles, which is the point where the handle meets the cup and put any value. I use four just for consistency and I smooth out the transition. It'll look something like this. So now that we're back in Fusion 360, I can show you how to do that. I will just press F again as a shortcut. 
and I will select these two circles. You'll notice that I can put in the value 1. It's somewhat smooth. It creates a somewhat round area. You can see this curve right here. That's how it creates it. It creates like a 1 by 1 square, and then it curves it out. And I can plug in larger or smaller values, such as 5, which creates a really big circle, or even like something crazy like 10. Actually, no, 10 won't work because it errors out and says that the circle is too small for that. So we're just going to go back to 4, which is what I chose originally. And we can see that it perfectly transitions into the cup. We just need to click Enter. And that is the handle complete. We can see it's perfectly smooth, ready for holding. Okay. So now that we use the fillet tool, we know how to use it right now. We're pretty experienced with it, I'd say. We can round out the rest of the edges pretty easily. So we need to round out the top edge, as I mentioned before. And we're also going to round out just the bottom edge, just to make it look a little bit prettier. So you can play with these values, but I use 1.5 for the top inside and outside edge, 2 millimeters for the bottom edge, and 3 millimeters for the inside of the cup. So I'm just going to show you how to do that right now. So we just need to press F again. Select these two edges, which are the top, inner, and outer. We can actually select these both at the same time if they're the same value. Type in 1.5, and you can see this perfectly rounded out. We can actually select a smaller value like 0.5, but it's still going to make it look a little sharp. And it's a really small difference, so you won't really notice it. But the thing is, you can't put anything greater than 1.5. Say if I tried like 1.6, 1.6 works, but if you try like something 3, it only rounds out the inside edge, you can see. You see it kind of creates a sharp edge. So we don't want that to happen. We just want a perfectly round one. And if we do something crazy like 10, it's going to error out again. It's not going to let me do it. Because this is a 3 millimeter wall, so can't really extrude 10 millimeters inward. So I'm just going to put 1.5 again. And press Enter. Perfect. You can see it's a round cup now. And we need to do that for the bottom edge, so repeat the same thing, press F, click on it, click 2, and it'll round up the bottom edge, and make it look better, and not as sharp. And just press enter once again. And we're actually going to do the inside of the cup too. Most cups, it's not going to be like a sharp transition from a wall to the base. There's usually some sort of transition phase, so we're just going to add that in here just for accuracy. Press F again. You can actually fillet the inside of this. And I'm going to type in 3. And it creates sort of circular curvature around the inside. And to demonstrate that more, I'm just going to type in something big, like 30. 30, you can see it's just like a perfect sphere. It's put inside. Because it's surrounding out each of the corners of the sphere. And just rotating it around. So I'm going to go back to 3. And... Yeah, that is the final product. You can go ahead and take a look at it more using the camera controls that I thought you were there. Let's pan around a little bit, orbit it, zoom in and out. And I'd say this looks like a coffee mug right about now. I would drink out of this. Okay. Now we're going to finish up our design. So we have a Fusion 360 project, and we created it. Now we just need to save it and export it. So we're going to export it as an OBJ or an STL file. We're going to use an STL file this time. That's because that's the most common file type for 3D printing. So if you want, you can use that file, put it into a 3D printer slicer, which is what they use to create the printer design. And if you just use that, then it'll create a object right in front of you. And if you haven't already, we need to save and export this. So we need to save it using this button right here, and we need to name it. And Fusion 360 is nice in that it saves to the cloud. So you can access this exact same file anywhere using your Fusion 360 Autodesk account. So I'm going to show you how to do it right here. Okay, so all we need to do is click on File and click on Save. You can see, just go ahead, give your object a name. I'll pick Coffee Mug Tutorial. And I will click Save. Now it'll be a saved object. You can see in the top it says coffee mug tutorial right there, which is exactly what we want. But now we just saved it as an Autodesk thing. We saved it to our Autodesk account. We actually want to export it now.
And to export as an STL or an OBJ file, we need to click on export, which is just under save in the same section. And we need to click a destination to export. And I'll just click my desktop for now. And there's another way to do it also. You can select 3D prints under export. And you can deselect 3D prints utility because we're not going to be sending it directly to the slicer. We're just going to be downloading the file and export through that instead. This is usually the faster method, so this is what I'm going to show. So we just need to go to File, go to 3D Print, and you'll see it shows this little sidebar again. So we need to select what we want to export. So I'm just going to click on the mug because that's all we want to export. And then once we do that, I'm going to deselect to send to 3D Print Utility. If this is on, then it'll want to send to one of these programs, which we don't really want. So we just need to deselect that, and we need to click OK. Once we do that, we can just go to desktop, and we can export it as an STL file or an OBJ file, but we're going to use STL. So I'm going to type in coffee mug tutorial once again, and I'll click save. And now it's saved to my desktop, as you can see right here. Right here, this is the file. And now that you've fully completed and exported the mug, congratulations, you've created a coffee mug and you can import this file into a 3D printing software, such as the one shown below, and get your model 3D printed. And we're not going to show how to use a 3D printer, that's a separate workshop entirely. For now, we're just going to learn how to 3D model. Now, to fully recap, we learned how to do multiple things today. We learned how to install Fusion 360. We learned how to navigate the interface and utilize the camera controls to our fullest extent. We learned how to create a 2D sketch and extrude it into a 3D sketch or a 3D object. And we learned how to use the following tools. We used the sketch tool, which includes the circle, the arc, the line, and the offset tool. The extrude tool, which is just push and pull. These two are the most important for creating 3D models. And finally, we used the modify tool to finish up our design, which is using the fillet tool. We also learned to save and export the final product to be used in other places. Once again, this workshop is hosted by DUIC. There is more information below, and if you want information, you can go ahead and email info at designyourcareers.org, or you can go to their website at www.designyourcareers.org. Thank you. Thank you for watching. For details, visit www.designyourcareers.org or send an email to info at designyourcareers.org. Subscribe to our channel, Design Your Careers, then hit the bell icon so you'll never miss a video.